Hi class, Bill Berry here with video three and hopefully final video in the orientation video for CSC 142. So in the first couple of videos we talked about some common questions and we looked at the course website and syllabus and now we're ready to get into some more specifics of the language. So let's jump out down and let's start talking about and reviewing a little bit about what we know about data types. As you know, all programming languages provide some kind of way to deal with data types. They may be more strongly typed where you have to declare things based on their type, which is true here in Java, but some of them are a little bit more lax where you don't really have to declare types, but still they have them built in. So there's always some way to represent numbers and characters of some kind, for instance. Also, languages tend to offer a difference between integer or integral types and floating point numbers. Remember that integers store numbers in whole fashion. They don't approximate, they store the entire number. So if you have a number like 34 that is stored as in an integer type spot, that 34 is going to be 34 no matter what. It's not approximately 34. But a floating point number is going to be stored approximately. So if you have a number stored as you know 34.23, even 34 itself stored as a floating point is stored as an approximation. That gets important later because as we're doing testing and checking on numbers, when we're comparing numbers, we have to pay attention to that. If those numbers are floating points, though there can be tiny little rounding errors and differences in the way numbers are, are represented. So keep that in mind. Floating point numbers can be off a tiny bit, can have rounding errors, and certainly can carry around a lot more digits. So just pay attention to that. Now Java certainly offers integer data types like int, it also offers a f a various floating point data types. The example that we'll use very often is a double. It also offers strings, and notice the data type for a string is capital S string. That gives you a little clue that that's a little bit different than the others, and there's a reason for that that we'll learn later. It also offers characters. Notice Java considers characters and strings different. C does this as well. So a character data type is a char, and that is for a single a single character, and that is not the same as a string. We'll also talk about booleans, and we'll use booleans, and the data type here is lowercase boolean, all spelled out. So those are data types that we'll tend to use, and Java offers those, and of course many others. Also note that the way that you describe literals, that you put in literal data, is going to be distinct for each of those data types. So if you type in a zero, just a zero, Java says, ah, this is an integer. If you type 0.0, .0 it knows that that's a floating point number, like a double. You should match your literals to the context in which you are working. So you have to pay attention. If you take, uh, if you divide by 0 and you divide by 0, 0.0, well, you're not going to divide by 0, but if you divide by 1 versus dividing by 1.0, you're going to get different answers depending on some of the other data types. Also notice, literals for strings will be enclosed in quotation marks. So hello in quotation, that's a string, whereas if you put apostrophes around it, around a single character, that is a char data type, not a string. So that's a little bit different from Python and maybe some other languages. Also, you can use true and false lowercase. Those are Boolean literals. <clears throat> also note, uh, languages, many languages, modern ones certainly, will offer ways to create other kinds of objects, to use them, but also to create them. So Java is certainly very rich in its ability to create and use objects, and we will take advantage of that and learn a lot about that during this course. So great stuff coming with all of that data types, uh, and just want to give you a quick review of what's going on there. The other thing to note right away about Java, uh, let's talk briefly about what is an interpreted language and what's a compiled language. Interpreted languages, many modern scripting languages like JavaScript, tend to translate statements one at a time from source code into machine code to execute. So um, if you hear the word script very often, it's actually kind of a clue that something is going on in the interpreted realm. But compiled languages tend to kind of gobble up a whole bunch of statements and then turn them into some sort of binary result. If you have a language like C, its target is often the machine-specific executable. So for instance, in C, if you write something, uh, you can turn it into Intel machine code, right? It'll actually be an executable, and that executable will run directly on the target platform, like C. 
Java, though, is kind of a weird hybrid of those two. You do a compilation step, yes, that is true, but it doesn't target machine code for that language. Instead, it creates something called bytecode. It is machine code-like, but it isn't machine-specific. So what you have to have then is an interpreter to take that bytecode and actually run it on the machine. So you have a Java virtual machine and there is a runtime portion which will actually take that and turn it into machine code that can run on a particular architecture. So Java, if you're asked, is it interpreted or compiled? Your answer is yes, it is both. It has elements of both pieces, and the bytecode is this intermediate thing which makes Java a little bit different and interesting to us. Let's look at the structure of a very basic Java program. Now, you're going to have a video to walk you through this, but let's just look at what you're typically going to write. We're not going to explain everything about why, <clears throat> but just for the time being, just know that this is the way your Java's going to, Java programs are going to look. Notice that every Java program is going to be encapsulated in a class. Everything you write, you're going to start with a class, and the, the file that is created in BlueJ is a class, and you're going to write your functions inside that class. There is nothing that runs that is outside a class in Java, which is part of how you know Java is very object-oriented in its thinking. Then, within that, you can name it for now anything you want, but notice we tend to name class names with uppercase letters, and we tend to make function definitions lowercase letters. So what you need to do for your programs for now is you're going to create a main function. You may create other ones, but your main function is going to look like this. You're going to first, after the class name, start with a curly brace, and you're going to match it with an ending curly brace later. That's how Java Mark starts and ends of things. Then you're going to declare the function, and it's going to look like this. Public static void main, lowercase, notice. Open parentheses. Here are the arguments to the main function. For now, you're not going to understand necessarily why we're typing this, but type it anyway. Uppercase s string, open and close square brackets, and then space args, a-g-a-r-g-s. So that's going to be the parameter. That's going to be uh, the, the reason for those parameters is if you want to run these programs from the command line, you can supply it parameters, and that's the way it works. Then, again, you're going to open curly brace. Notice that our convention for the class is that you put the open curly brace on the same line as the code that kicks off the block, and then you put the code in there, and then you close the curly brace parallel to the block that's, or the code that started it. So you can see visually how things line up, <clears throat> and you can see exactly how your code is uh, lined up and how the blocks correspond, and you can see that by indentation. So while Java doesn't really care about indentation, the humans do. So this is how, uh, how a Java program is going to look. There is a style guide that's provided for the course, so you're asked to do that. And you're going to be indenting four spaces. BlueJ will put in, if you type tab, BlueJ will put in four spaces, and that's going to be standard uh, indentation that we're going to use. And that's what your Java programs are going to work like. Again, there's another video that's going to show you exactly how to do this in BlueJ, how to type, how to see things, how to compile, and all of that's going to be shown in that video on BlueJ. But that's just a quick little introduction to some key concepts in Java when it comes to coding. So what are we going to use for the course? Well, again, I've mentioned it before, we're going to use BlueJ, which is a development environment. It's a little IDE, not super fancy, but actually, you know, relatively rich. It has rich, it has a nice object, uh, you know, class, it creates a nice class diagram for you, and it has some decent stuff in it. So you'll want to download BlueJ and the Java SDK. If you've already downloaded the SDK, then just the, Java, just the BlueJ part's all you're going to need. These are free, so that's great for students. We don't have to go buy anything. And again, there's going to be a video. So last but not least, last couple topics. What do you need to do to get started? So right away, if you don't have the textbook, go order it right now. The bookstore at the at North Seattle might have them. They should have them. But if not, get them online. This t uh, doesn't matter if it's a used textbook or, or a new textbook. You'll just need to get that. It doesn't matter about the lab stuff in terms of a used book. You don't need to worry about anything. Just get a copy of the book. And this book will work for both CSC 142 and CSC 143. So that helps to defray the cost a little bit or amortize the cost over a couple of quarters. Get BlueJ and install it. 
Also, there is a link on the course website to the Java API reference. You probably want to have that. On your desktop, I have BlueJay, a link to BlueJay, and a link to the API uh, reference right away because you're going to forever be looking up small details. You know, you're going to use a color class. Well, what's in the color class? Well, I'm going to go look it up in the API reference. How does the scanner work? You're going to look it up there. So just a very useful thing to have sitting there uh, ready at your fingertips. Again, with Moodle, you need to go sign up if you haven't already. Uh, and and uh, log in and enroll for the class right away. You need to get that done uh, immediately. Also, look over the syllabus. Again, read it start to end. Read it carefully. Ask any questions. If anything doesn't make sense, please ask. That's sort of a contract between us, so uh, you're expected to know what's in there and be okay in general with what you see. Also, the calendar. Again, great thing to know about. Know where to find it. Know how to go see what's due. And again, all the different sources ought to point you to the same due dates and the same materials. So those are things that you need to do right away. During the course, you may ask, where can I get some help? Well, forums are a great place to ask general questions. So if you need a clarification, post it in the forum. Again, go and, and enroll or uh, subscribe to all those forums so you're, you make sure you get any information that can be useful coming your way as well. So uh, please don't give away answers. You're not, you know, don't say, what's the answer to something that is due, right? They, they're a place to ask general questions. How come I can't do this? What's the general way that we want to go about that? So uh, definitely use those forums to your advantage. There are on-campus tutors, and there is a tutor schedule posted. They may be able to help you with a few things. Uh, please do not let them set your direction or change your direction. There are times when students go in there kind of with an idea of what they want to do, and the tutors say, well, why would you go about it that way and completely change their direction? Your tutors are not in our class, and so be wary if they're telling you to change the universe. But if you need some tips and uh, you know general general guidelines, they can often help do that. Also, uh, you have an instructor who will hopefully be very responsive. That's me. So if you send me email, I'm having trouble with this. Uh, please, along with that, if you think it's relevant, send me a screenshot or send me your project. Right? Just send me your Java file. And it's easy for me, even if I'm on my phone, I can look at your Java file and I can often answer. I'll try to respond within a couple of hours, but certainly within a day. It's, it's very rare for me to be that long without responding. Uh, that we can also not only engage with email, but we can also talk on the phone if you need. My phone number's in the syllabus, and we can work on that. We can do a Skype call if we need to actually write things or work on the Blackboard kind of thing together, or we can meet in person. I'm not on campus. I don't maintain an office there, but if we need to get together to make something work, we'll find a way to do that. So that brings us to the end of our orientation. We've covered a lot, but I hope that gives you an, um, a great way to get started with the course and understand how it's going to work, and we'll, that'll prepare you for what's ahead. So look that stuff over that I've mentioned, especially the stuff on the what do I need to do to get started, and please ask any questions via email or in the forums. I look forward to working with you. I looking, uh, look forward to a great quarter together, and uh, let's do it, and let's learn a lot about Java and the process. Should be fun. Thanks for watching.